loaded question uh, mm -hmm. again. There are only loaded oh, questions. There are only loaded <laughs> questions. I, I, I feel like the the uh, the title of this interview series can mm -hmm. just be just loaded questions yeah. like, because that, that's that, that's what it is. I had the great opportunity to do a short workshop with Nasruddin Shah, mm -hmm. and one of the things I remember he said in the opening class is to say no one, and he's very strict when he right. talks. In my workshop, is going to cry in a scene because crying is the cheapest thing that an actor can do. <laughs> and I get blown away when I meet someone and they say, Ki, yeah, Breaking Bad was too slow for me. <laughs> like, have you ever met people like that? Like I someone, was one of those people. Yeah, someone who switched off Breaking Bad at episode four saying, I couldn't watch it. And you're just blown away. You're like, like, like how? Like, let's say if I want to like cry, I would listen to a particular song. Not just crying, like even for happiness also. What is it? Tell me, we can, we can play it now. No, I will cry after the interview. No, 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 is it going that badly? No, no, no. Okay, yeah. हेलो एंड वेलकम टू चलचित्र टॉक्स मेरा नाम हिंदोल है और आज के इस एपिसोड में मैंने बात की एक्टर ताहिर राज बसीन के साथ जिन्हें आपने मर्दानी छिचोरे लूप लपेटा और ये काली काली आंखें जैसे फिल्म्स और शोज में पसंद किया है ताहिर हैज अ वेरी डीप एंड जेनुइन लव फॉर फिल्म्स एंड द एक्टिंग प्रोसेस जो आपको आगे इस एपिसोड में देखने मिलेगा उनकी ढेर सारी यूनिक रिकमेंडेशन के साथ तो अभी आप एपिसोड देखिए और मैं आपसे मिलता हूँ एपिसोड के बाद एंड में बिकॉज आई हैव अ ब्रिलियंट एनिमेटेड फिल्म दैट आई वॉन्ट टू रिकमेंड टू यू This video is brought to you by Mubi which is a curated streaming service showcasing exceptional films from around the globe. Aapko Mubi ki 1 month ki free subscription mil jayegi if you click on the link mubi.com/chalchitra. And now let's start the video. So first of all I'll start with uh, what's your relationship with movies? What kind of movies do you watch? I I see we're not starting small. This is quite like a loaded yeah. question. Yeah. So Go as long as it. I don't have to keep it like a ten second. Uh, 10 this second is answer. we have all the memory space in the world. <laughs> right. Okay. Awesome. So I mean I feel like the answer to this will have to go back. From where you started right. watching movies and how you consumed them, because like a kid who grew up watching films in a multiplex versus in a smaller city mm. has a very different relationship right. uh, with films. My uh, dad used to be with the Indian Air Force, mm. uh, or उसके वजह से we used to travel all over. So mm. I've actually grown up in Gwalior, in in Jamnagar, in Chandigarh, and all of these smaller towns mm. until I finally moved to a big city when I was finishing school. Right. um and so in a lot of these smaller towns it used to be single screens right. or like a very romanticized version of watching a film which used to be open air uh, mm. open air theaters mm. and my first experience of watching a film i remember um funnily enough was we were came to visit relatives in bombay mm. and uh, they said ki ek picture i think i must have been 6 or 7 years old aur hum theater jayenge and mm. as a kid you have no idea ki ek mm. kis cheez ki baat kar rahe hain i was just told ki bada parda hoga and mm. जैसे आप टीवी पर चित्र देखते हो वो ही आपको बड़ी दिखेगी सो इन माय माइंड आई वाज एक्सपेक्टिंग लाइक टीवी इतना तो इतना बट देन एज अ किड व्हेन यू वॉक इन एंड यू सी समथिंग दैट साइज इट ब्लोज यू अवे इट्स लाइक अ डिफरेंट वर्ल्ड दैट यू गो इनटू एंड नाइन्टीज किड्स वॉन्ट एज एक्सपोज टू मीडिया एज टूडे इज आर सो वेन यू सो समथिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इट वॉज लिटरली योर फर्स्ट ग्लिम्स ऑफ दैट रियालिटी एंड जो जीता Yeah, uh, Wahi Sekandar was like the first yeah. first film I saw, and I remember just being like transported mm -hmm. into a different world. Um, and then from there, it was a lot of small screen, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, single screen theaters where mm -hmm. I grew up on my dose of of Bollywood because mm -hmm. in '90s when there was no satellite TV, there was no internet. Like that's what that's what it was. So I remember watching. like everything kabhi ha kabhi na dil to pagal hai every david dhawan film mm. until you then move to um, college and school yeah. in delhi which is where i sort of had that existential moment ki mujhe laga ki yaar people are watching like world cinema and they're mm. watching stuff other than what comes on in those days it was star movies and right. star world and hbo and those were very your commercial like sort of um, uh, rambos and terminators yeah. used to be over there but like friends were were uh, talking about like tarantino and and mm. kurosawa and like the godfather trilogy and that's when you started to go to palika which is like an underground right. market in delhi and buying like these pirated cds and mm. dvd am i sounding very old when no, i when i say this yeah, because that's how it used to be man like yeah. there was no uh, there was no downloads there was no um, there, 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 there was no streaming was so no you used to go and get like these one guy in palika who used to have like access to these films and you started to watch very bad quality but amazing films mm. um but to come back to your question of what is your relationship it's a it's a it's a cliched um, it's a cliched quote but something that i really always relate to is that you know you have art only so that you don't have to bear reality 
-hmm. And I, I really feel that way about about movies. And another, I think it's a Linklater quote mm -hmm. um, where he says, "I get more excited about the representation of life than life itself." Right. It's a bit pessimistic, mm -hmm. but f a film lover will understand. Like right. what, like a good film or a good piece of like a series or um, e even like a well done stand up comedy set, like what it can do to your perception. And I really mm -hmm. like relate to that. So I would, in a nutshell, say like that is my relationship. When I watch a film, I'm not only listening to the music or the dialogues. It's a very visceral uh, experience where you come out having felt the film. And I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be poetic. I literally mean it. Like a bad film mm -hmm. can make me feel like. Like ganda khana khaya ho, you know, and a good film can make me feel like the way someone feels like when they listen to a good song or right. have like their favorite ice cream. And mm -hmm. so I feel like films are um, it's it's a it's it's a mystic art. Mm -hmm. Like it just has so many layers of everything. Like every artistic form that has evolved over the past two centuries, whether it's painting, uh, photography, sculpture, architecture, it. It, all of it, like you know, your set designers are architects. Right. Like your cinematographers are modern day light painters, and mm -hmm. all of it comes together, and you have like one brush stroke in that, and you get to create something that lasts forever. I can go on for like two hours just on this answer, but to sum it up, my mm -hmm. relationship with the movies is, is is that it has the ability to heal you, mm -hmm. it has the ability to make you feel sad, it has the ability to make you feel happy, and it's uh, it's everything. Right. And uh, there are a lot of things that you talked about here, but I'll just touch upon. Uh, so when you started discovering, uh, you know, world cinema and movies from Hollywood, but like something like Tarantino and other movies. So uh, what were some of those initial movies like that uh, made you consciously sit up and watch? Okay, there's something happening here. Um, a a lot of them because again, like when you're used to watching, um. Pulp Bollywood or commercial mm -hmm. Hollywood films that are coming on satellite television, you know that they're, I mean, you know now in hindsight that all of them are edited, they're censored. Mm -hmm. But when you start watching a Tarantino film mm -hmm. for the way he uses violence, some mm -hmm. people f f f find the profanity and the violence a little overboard. But if you're really looking at how it blends into the story, it's poetic, it's, right. it's art. And it's the same way that Scorsese uses mm -hmm. um, language. Like mm -hmm. if you're from the Bronx, you will talk in a certain way, you right. will dress, you will smoke, you will do drugs, uh, whatever it is. So that came as an assault to the system of like, mm -hmm. wow, like what, what is, what like where have I been like for mm -hmm. the past 10 or 15 years? What is this? I remember Pulp Fiction being mm -hmm. like one of those breakthrough moments where just the, no, of course by then also I'd seen uh, some of Christopher Nolan's um, mm -hmm. stuff. I remember, I, I forget the name of his first black and white short film. Doodlebug. Doodlebug. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Right. Uh, like the way it's done, it predates Memento. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like that break in narrative and the mm -hmm. way he's doing it and, um, where did I read this? Where he actually was working a regular job. Mm -hmm. Nolan was working a regular job and he shot this over weekends only. Mm -hmm. So they would shoot over weekends. In five days, everyone would go back to their regular job and then shoot over weekends again. Right. And it's uh, just crazy level of passion and mm -hmm. the extent that they would take it take it to. And out of the box thinking is, mm -hmm. is just what like the first this thing was. So Pulp Fiction was the first time where it was like, wow, what's... What's going on? Clockwork Orange uh, mm -hmm. was another. Space Odyssey uh, right. 2001 was another. Just that that edit cut of like mm -hmm. when you go from the apes to the spaceship. Right. You've never seen something like that. It was just it it was it was crazy. Yeah. Have you seen the Barbie teaser? The first teaser that came out. Uh, I haven't, unfortunately. Should so, I? I've seen the Oppenheimer one. I haven't yeah. seen Barbie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come sort to of come, like, yeah. tells you so much about yeah. the first. Yeah. yeah, I'll come to that as well. But the first Barbie teaser, since you mentioned uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, the cut that happens uh, yeah. from the monkey throwing the bone to a spaceship. Oh, right. I've read about yeah. this. I've read about they this. They have yeah. kind of parodied it. And like, right. like, that was the first glimpse of the movie. So yeah. that's where, like, the whole debate began. So, right now, the most important question in the world. What are you watching first? I, I kind of know your answer, but uh, what are you watching first? Barbie or Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah. What did you think? But I will watch uh, both. Just because yeah. I feel um, like the, the team that is gone behind this Barbie, people mm. are like some people are judging mm. it based on just the title. Right. But I feel that there's going to be like that Space Odyssey yeah. cut. There's going to be uh, like a lot of Easter eggs in yeah. there that will be yeah. fun to fun to watch. Yeah. Before which I shall also watch Mission Impossible just yeah. because. because yeah. You have to. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> No, I also wanted to ask, uh, what did you think of Tenet? I um, just 
to put it mildly it wasn't my favorite uh, mm. chris van olen uh, uh, film i mm. i really enjoyed it for because again he pushes the envelope when it comes to storytelling every time i mm. as an audience enjoyed the way he shot india um, mm. and i i loved the music right. but and as far as i feel like there is that fine line between where you go to a point where an audience really has to squint to understand and follow the narrative and mm-hmm. there are times when he's very cleverly done that but also managed to communicate very well what okay. he's trying to say and interstellar being a, a great mm-hmm. example what's the other one where it's one day in a war three timelines so dunkirk dunkirk which yeah. some people were really because it came immediately after the dark knight right. series so yeah. some people had a, when i say some people i mean like my 10 bunch of friends who mm-hmm. i take movie recommendations from mm-hmm. had a lot of hate towards it saying that no it doesn't feel like a nolan film but mm-hmm. but i love that like the mm-hmm. fact that a director can come out and do something which completely breaks away from uh, norm which i right. feel like great directors uh, like kubrick or um, uh, spielberg mm-hmm. managed to do really well so i would say dunkirk interstellar would definitely rank mm-hmm. higher for me than uh, tenet yeah fair enough So you mentioned that you discuss uh, movies with your friends. So yeah. what have been some of the movies or shows that you've been, uh, you know, discussing with your friends lately? Um, a, a film that I was a little late to the party uh, watching, but I really enjoyed was Worst Person in the World. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just really, again, like love the when you watch a lot of European cinema. Right. Um, the amazing thing is how they deal with relationships, mm-hmm. and it. teaches you so much about like the basic cultural difference about the general norm in our cinema is that we romanticize all right. uh, relationships like you know when you fall in love with a girl mm-hmm. it's romantic cut to a song in spain cut right. to a song in greece when it's a breakup even the breakup is shown as a coming of age right. or it's shown as a you know wo shishe ke through mm-hmm. barish and it's romanticized right. but what i loved about which is beautiful because mm-hmm. i think like subconsciously what happens is then that is the narrative that plays in your mind when you're experiencing that in life mm-hmm. but what was amazing for me in worst person in the world is how bare bone it it mm-hmm. was have you have you seen it have you seen yes, the film yeah seen. so that moment when the girl, when the protagonist walks into a party and meets a stranger right. who she wasn't mm-hmm. expecting yeah. it's something that on paper when you're just reading the script would mm-hmm. seem so out of place but the way they have done it mm-hmm. seems like yeah this could happen in in bandra yeah. you know and that's what i loved about it is mm-hmm. that it could it's it's so relatable regardless of what what part of the world you're in right so uh, is it important for you to uh, see characters who are extremely rela- relatable or matlab uh, like do you have to relate to them uh, their milieu or can it be like a completely uh, you know fictional setting and uh, you know some like something like apocalypto like uh, the mel gibson film it's oh. a very like you know made up setting but you still feel for the character so what hmm. kind of films are you drawn more towards okay so that, there's not a straight answer to that mm-hmm. but what i feel is is that characters do not have to be placed in a world that you relate to in order for mm-hmm. you to relate to them yeah. there is a certain humanity in what an actor a writer a director can bring to that character that makes you uh, that makes you relate to the character right. like just for example um the, i'm thinking about this because i'm trying mm-hmm. to get the quote right. right childhood is when you feel that batman is the hero mm-hmm. adulthood is when you realize that the joker makes a little sense right you know and there are times in the dark knight series where you feel re- you, you can relate to the joker i'm mm-hmm. just a dog chasing cars right. i won't know what to do with one if it actually if i actually mm-hmm. caught one there's a lot of philosophy in yeah. that in in that in that dialogue mm-hmm. so for me um even if i was to look at what someone would consider an over the top uh, setting in mm-hmm. in bollywood or mm-hmm. an unattainable or an aspirational set say zindagi na mile right. dobara um of course like the the economics of that social strata mm-hmm. is aspirational for a lot of people mm-hmm. but why you relate to those characters and right. why that's a cult film in our culture is mm-hmm. because there is a lot of humanity in in mm-hmm. that the fact that a corporate guy had to leave his job but is still at work when he's in spain yeah. is something that's so fundamentally human right. uh, that you that you relate to them and so mm-hmm. i hope that answers your question yes. is that i like to watch stuff where i can relate to characters right. yes but that relation doesn't have to mean that it has to be a delhi boy who's come to bombay to follow right. his passion mm-hmm. it can be in any setting as mm-hmm. long as you find and strangely as i'm thinking thinking about it it's how i approach characters that mm-hmm. i uh, play as well because i very often played parts that on paper are oh my god like you know i've mm-hmm. i've never even been close to this reality but how do you find the ground zero humanity uh, in that part and right. then sort of play to that right 
सो वॉट वर द मूवीज एंड परफॉर्मेंसेज दैट काइंड ऑफ पुस्ट यू टूवर्ड्स लाइक यू नो कंसिडरिंग बींग एन एक्टर दैट यू नो दिस इज समथिंग आई वुड लाइक टू एम्यूलेट loaded question uh, mm-hmm. again which is why there are only loaded questions oh, there are only loaded questions <laughs> I, I, that should that could be the uh, i i feel like the the uh, the title of this interview series can mm-hmm. just be just loaded questions yeah. like because that that's, that that's what it is um so there are there are two parts to this answer one is of course like the stuff that influenced you a lot mm-hmm. when like i said that phase of when you moved from uh, the the template um, studio films to watching more broader world mm-hmm. cinema um i i would have to say scarface was right. was one of them dog day afternoon mm-hmm. just because you see al pacino's range right. in in those um in those films um linklater's before sunrise series mm-hmm. i love those because just with text there's just like how you can hold an audience's attention for an hour and a mm-hmm. half and the fact that the actors were involved in the in the writing of yeah. that film then of course Marlon Brando for me is an exercise in restraint mm-hmm. like how do you communicate with min- minimalism and that has influenced a lot of the stuff uh, that I've done I think one of his earlier films before um, streetcar was um, the wild ones the wild one mm-hmm. on a on a motorcycle right. and it's just classic case studies mm-hmm. uh, butch cassidy and the yeah. sandans kid and the second part of this answer because mm-hmm. you said that what are the things that influenced you mm-hmm. and there's a past tense in that i feel yeah. like in an actor's life and mm-hmm. actually in any artist's life that influence never stops right and there's like just so much constant stuff that you watch that just like blows you away and mm-hmm. like more recent stuff compared to the others mm-hmm. would be um uh, tom tom hardy in a film mm-hmm. called bronson right. i don't know if you've seen it right. like it's crazy then to- another another one by tom hardy where he's just in a car talking yeah. on on bluetooth on a phone mm-hmm. like that's and i'm i'm specifically taking names of films which are like pure performance like mm-hmm. dog day afternoon was just in a bank and mostly on mm-hmm. the phone which is crazy um there's also um, night crawler mm-hmm. just incredible incredible performance drive more recently right. by ryan gosling shutter island mm-hmm. uh, dicaprio like these are all like again it's a constant stream of like mm-hmm. things that uh, that influence you mm-hmm. and what i like about what i love about all of the actors that i've i've mentioned mm-hmm. is that a dicaprio can do a titanic and can do a shutter island right. you know uh, uh, and the same with with tom hardy and or or with al pacino is that they take they take parts or mm-hmm. they take characters and they add stardust to right. them right right uh, so uh, i had a question related to performances that this is a general a uh, kind of notion on youtube especially that uh, whenever we talk of great performances it's either like let's say uh, someone crying like if you, like jaise awards mein montage karta hai like best yeah. actor nomination yeah. and it's always a crying scene yeah. or a screaming scene yeah. so um, what do you define like as like jaise hallmarks of a great performance like yeah. let's say just points that you should consider that okay this is why this is a great performance yeah. I did a when in in the years when I just came to Bombay uh there's a lot of time before you know work actually mm-hmm. starts to 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 snowball in and I had the great opportunity to do a short workshop with Nasruddin Shah mm-hmm. um at that time and one of the things I remember he said in the opening class is to say no one and he's very strict when he right. talks in my workshop is going to cry in mm-hmm. a scene because crying is the cheapest thing that an actor can do <laughs> and I I mean that's that's also an extreme example right. but I feel that it is much harder um to to hold back and to right. have restraint and there's a beautiful thing that I think I heard uh, Manoj Bajpai say in an interview is that when you hold back and you're actually breathing through and living being authentically present in that moment then the way the audience connects to you mm-hmm. is on a physical level their breath matches uh, mm-hmm. matches your breath and um the audience cries you don't cry right you know and for me that is the 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 power of a, of a performance this again isn't true in every case like mm-hmm. of course if the script demands it and you have to break down then that is what mm-hmm. is essential but anything of high impact loses value if it's repeated if the same character mm-hmm. in in like every alternate scene is crying mm-hmm. uh, you will end up being desensitized mm-hmm. to to that emotion so to use it but to use it uh, judiciously is right. the key right and what are some of the indian performances that you have you know really liked um i, I it's hard to pinpoint exact moments but mm. like shows that i have really enjoyed right. watching uh, recently are delhi crime mm-hmm. i've always been a massive fan of sacred games just mm-hmm. because like that was such a benchmark for bringing in ott uh, right. into then um trial by fire recently mm-hmm. had some incredible moments of performances 
um, Farzi is mm-hmm. another one, Family Man. Like I feel uh, like in all of these, there are like those high points where mm-hmm. it was necessary, but then there's also uh, restraint. Right. And uh, yeah, coming back to some of the movies that you like. So if someone had to get to know you, like you as a person, what are some of the movies that you would like to recommend in that space? Ongoing list, always huh. being uh, yeah. edited, but uh, stuff again that was of huge influence mm-hmm. was um, a, a, a lot of stuff by Fincher, like mm-hmm. uh, the Zodiac, uh, of, um, which was the other one, Seven, is, right. is, is just amazing. Um, of course, like Scorsese, like I feel Shutter Island, Departed, like mm-hmm. these are again like the reason why I mentioned these was because the time that these were uh, the, these were coming out mm-hmm. were. You know, it was it was it was like the starting point of when an international release would happen, and it would almost simultaneously release right. in India. And like people today don't realize mm-hmm. what a big deal that was mm-hmm. for back in the early two thousands and the late nineties. You would have to wait a couple of months mm-hmm. or source a film from from somewhere else. So the just the joy of watching Departed mm-hmm. uh, in in the cinema was uh, was just like uh, mm-hmm. next level. But other things that. You were talking earlier about like what are the things that you're discussing with your friends right. at the moment and international series, mm-hmm. uh, Succession Man, like right. season four, like it's just it's so hard mm-hmm. to um, keep the energy of like the mm-hmm. first season up and keep it going with every uh, like successful mm-hmm. uh, like like ep- season mm-hmm. and I feel like they really did that and for yeah. people who haven't watched it I would like really highly recommend mm-hmm. Succession and one of the best ways to watch it is if you haven't just watch all four mm-hmm. in in one go because I remember having to watch like one then wait one right. year having yeah, to watch it the other the other thing that I recently watched on Hotstar is called The Bear mm-hmm. have you seen The Bear yes again like framing minimalism sound mm-hmm. design just like just incredible it's a it's always a joy to watch something that of course you know that the writing is yeah. incredible but then every department whether it is acting like I was reading about how the actors went into a six month workshop mm-hmm. of uh, working in a kitchen Right. Just so that when the shot of cutting the vegetables is taken, it's mm. actually the actor doing it and not a yeah. not a hand double, and that's crazy because yeah. that level of uh, the, of authenticity shows in the shows in the performance. Right. Mm, then the other one that we were talking about off camera is Dave. Yeah. Just for uh, it's about a white boy who wants mm. to rap in a rapper's world, but the meta level of that right. writing. Or because it's semi autobiographical and it's a man making fun of of himself and his sexuality and it's just so well done and you mm-hmm. fall in love with 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 everyone right in that uh, you mentioned the bear so i have to talk to you about uh, season 2 episode 6 yeah. uh, which is the dinner episode and uh, the sound design in that yeah uh, we began this conversation where you mentioned that uh, recreation of life on art is like far more uh, like that is more uh, dear to you than like real life or yeah. not and i think that episode is a great example of that like we have all had you know moments like that in our life but the way they have you know kind of depicted it be it the camera be it the actors yeah the kind of people who came in yeah. for those parts it's yeah. just crazy yeah yeah but there is season 2 episode 7 which is the, the episode right after that with the richy character which like again i was in the space after episode 6 that uh if they don't do like something nice i will like stop watching the show because like it's getting too much and then it's like the most heartwarming episode ever so yeah. which uh, like what do you what are your thoughts on like those two episodes yeah that's a that's a beautifully put question what i also enjoyed about it is that like very often when we watch um what's the word that i should use family films or right. family oriented films and this mm-hmm. is like internationally mm-hmm. i'm not only talking about india there is a the tendency to romanticize the family holiday or right. like you know the family sitting around the table mm-hmm. but the realness with which mm-hmm. like they showed it in episode 6 in yeah. in bear yeah. of um how small things mm-hmm. can like tick someone off and then mm-hmm. send you into like a mind fuck of another yeah. are we allowed to say fuck yes <laughs> okay yeah how can you can send you into a mind fuck of like just something that someone says and mm-hmm. i think there's this amazing Uh, Eckhart Tolle, like, are you familiar with? He's a yes. philosopher and spiritual guru. He says, mm-hmm. if you think you're evolved, try and have dinner with your family. Like, you know, <laughs> because like it's like they know where yeah. the buttons yeah. are. And so, episode six was definitely a break from the narrative in the bear. Like at some point, ten minutes in, you're wondering why am I watching this? Right. This is supposed to be a show about a uh, about a kitchen. But by the end of that episode, you feel like you know everyone so yeah. much better. Um, and that's what episode seven. Uh, comes to yeah, yeah. is that then there can be small moments of of references um, mm-hmm. that either Richie drops or Carmen drops 
that you can relate to and you mm. feel like almost like hey you just know them at a much deeper level it's mm. almost like you have a work colleague and an mm. acquaintance and then all of a sudden you've been invited to a house party where mm. you've got to see them meet their parents mm. meet the siblings have a fight in front of you so you just are more like you have a hidden secret right. between the character and i think it was brilliantly done in the moment in episode 6 i didn't understand it mm. but especially in the finale episode mm. and i don't want to give spoilers for people mm. who haven't seen it yeah. it all just ties together so so beautifully right right you also mentioned uh, succession succession is a show that we have discussed and dissected and debated a lot on this channel with yeah. like each season so with regards to the last season uh, which was your favorite episode like any or any moment in particular that stood out for you um see it's hard for me to remember um, episodes in particular mm-hmm. but a moment any that moment for me or scene would yeah be. a moment for me that um, that really summarizes the show is like they are in a moment where the siblings are having a, a massive argument with their father as they are mm. through most of the season right. and then at some way the father has made a business move that has mm. really screwed them right. and they think that it's the bottom of the of the pit and Kendall who through the seasons has been through like this spiritual awakening mm. slash she's gone through a musical moment yeah. say, says something to uh, Roman and Shiv where you know if uh, the buddha says and then he goes <laughs> on to talk about the philosophy of like sometimes mm. it's just about riding the storm until the silver lining or whatever and roman just looks at him and says nice tom fords buddha and like because he's wearing designer shoes you know in buddhism sometimes your greatest tormentor can also be your most perceptive teacher mm-hmm. hey buddha nice tom fords and it's just so such a casual throwaway and right. of course roman the way he's played mm. it is just it puts into category of the superficiality right. of of the show and the materialness of that world at the same time how tongue and cheek they mm. are and it was just a brilliant acting moment and i would love to know whether it was improvised or actually written right. i've looked for it uh, on behind mm-hmm. in the behind the scenes and then another moment is when um, and this is a bit of a spoiler but after one of the main characters in the series passes away mm-hmm. um, the the siblings walk into a room and right. then they see a film playing on the television right. and i read something in the behind the scenes where the direct direction team on that very day mm-hmm. shot what they're watching on the television and when the siblings walk in and they see that moment they're actually as actors and as people seeing that for the first time right. so the reactions that they're getting on camera are authentic mm-hmm. and it's like that level of forward planning for me right. that makes the show is that mostly 99% of the time with a production that size and as hectic as it would be you would most mostly be reacting to a green screen right of like you know uh, on the script you know that this is what you're watching now react to it but for that to actually be playing mm-hmm. and for someone to have the, the the foresight to say that let's get authentic right. reactions is beautiful right so uh, one question that i wanted to ask you is about the classics so there is a lot of debate uh, going on right now that uh, should you really have to like the classics like from a film appreciation point of view you have to watch them because you know you need to know what happened in citizen kane how things were done all of those things right but do you actually have to like those movies loaded question <laughs> yeah as a, as someone who appreciates film i think you should hmm. have like watch right, them right. because you know the i mean again it's like the classic rule of you hmm. need to know the rules before you break yeah. them um, yeah that that's the rules part that, of it but yeah. like for example i do you have to yeah. like it yeah it's such a subjective question mm, right. because again like i saw this amazing tarantino interview where he was like if you talk to gen z and like the gen z audience today mm. i i don't know whether to judge this or to just put it out like mm. a fact like there are a lot of kids today who grew up believing that marvel movies are movies right that is their idea of cinema because mm. they have gone in and the first film that they have watched like the lion king or aladdin mm. or in my case jojita vai sikandar was for me iron man is for them so that benchmark is of the man. pace with which a film moves the kind mm. of cg mm. it's very hard then for someone whose first film has been avengers mm. to then say now go and watch citizen kane or godfather right, right. and like it mm. to watch it yes i would mm-hmm. say like you should watch it because uh, this thing but my equivalent to that would be so i'm from delhi mm-hmm. right and i saw the transition of when the delhi metro opened and you mm-hmm. could get from delhi university to connaught place mm-hmm. in now 20 minutes which mm-hmm. would otherwise take you an hour and a half by road and as was and i can say this about so many things because i'm on the cusp of that pre facebook generation yeah. then facebook to instagram and so it's very romantic to talk about a time of hey pata hai like you know before instagram you know this is what and it's great to know that reality mm-hmm. but for someone to actually live in today as today being the 00 and yeah. appreciate it 
it's a tough ask i get blown away when i meet someone uh, of a of a, a younger audience age group and they say ki yaar breaking bad was too slow for me <laughs> like have you ever met people like that like i someone, was one of those people yeah someone who switched off breaking bad at episode 4 saying i couldn't watch it and you're just blown away you're like 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 how mm. and then you go back to watching it and you compare it to something a lot more mainstream today like a money heist right. or something and then you realize that you get so attuned to something happening every 4 minutes mm. that possibly that doesn't hold your attention it's sad right. but it's happening right yeah you also touched upon uh, some european films like uh, the, the worst person in the world and stuff are there any more films in that space that uh, you like and would like to recommend i think lobster was a mm. film uh, yeah. that that i really liked um then there is um what what is it um sad, sad the saddest person the same person who made uh, square and um uh, triangle of sadness triangle, triangle of sadness. sadness triangle of sadness again such a like an amazing uh, statement on on social media and right. like what what what's going on those are just a few ones on the top mm-hmm. of my head right uh any more movies that you would like to recommend or i can then move on to the next section um again like since we were talking about like series i spoke mm-hmm. about like the a lot of the current stuff which was like the bear and dave right. but if i was just to go back in time a little since we right. are talking about breaking bad there was a show called the wire right. which i think was phenomenal and mm-hmm. again a lot of people who start watching that today find it find it very yeah. slow but the wire it was like the the one of those like hallmark shows mm-hmm. which started off like the change of hey like you know this is the way you can like mm-hmm. show narrative in in television and mm-hmm. then of course like there's there's breaking bad another show that i found phenomenal just for treatment acting writing was true detectives mm. uh, just like amazing season 1 right. for me fargo mm-hmm. again season 1 and season 3 mm-hmm. just am- amazing stuff mind mind hunter mind hunter crazy yeah and uh, you mentioned fargo uh, in general like do you uh, follow the coen brothers like in general yeah yeah the big lebowski man like right. all all the way <laughs> yeah. i just like i mean i love how like there seems to be this notion that engagement today is everything right. and engagement to someone who is not film literate mm. often means pace right har 3 minute mein kuch hona chahiye uh. and uh, fargo and the coen brothers like i feel like break that norm right. and they break it really well like if you watch fargo just for its pace mm. it's very slow like mm. you know it's a it's a slow show but there's so much happening in that slowness and right. in those silences and that's why i i i love their work This is a very niche uh, question, like the one that I asked you about Coen Brothers. But the yeah. thing is, I judge uh, like how much they have explored the Coen Brothers through like their response. Oh, for man. example, yeah, if no, someone says, quiz, yeah. "Yes," yeah. if someone says like uh, "No Country for Old Men," I'm like, "Okay, they've watched the later movies." Yeah. If someone says "The Big Lebowski," then I know that okay, they've watched everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So of course, yeah, "No Country for Old Men" also yeah. an example of like how you've got like those classic like Western yeah. frames, but there's like so much. so much going on just in yeah. treatment and in and in acting yeah. and the dude man there was a long time <laughs> in college when i just used to have a poster of the dude in yeah. my uh, in in my room yeah the, that that's a philosophy i guess yeah. to that that seems very romantic well, yeah exactly when you come to bombay you realize you can't live <laughs> like the dude all the time yeah yeah great uh, so now i would like to ask you about your favorite books uh, right. that you'd like to recommend Sure. Um, books again, like a lot of my reading now, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because of time happens in like you know like articles or like o- opinions, mm-hmm. and it's become smaller, bite-sized uh, reading or that terrible thing of like where audio books give you like a concise version. Mm-hmm. But when I'm on vacation or when I have time, it would have to be um, like Murakami's mm-hmm. uh, style of writing. It's just because like surrealism is something that I feel. like i i relate yeah. to a lot and when not reading um fiction the more non fiction stuff is always centered around um strangely uh, entrepreneurship not okay. because i feel like it has it there is a time when it merges with acting but i just feel like a lot of the journey that most mm-hmm. entrepreneurs creative entrepreneurs mm-hmm. uh, go through is very similar to what an artist goes to particularly yeah. in a place like like bombay because mm-hmm. there is so many things that are not taught to you in college or in acting school or in like when you're when you're mm-hmm. studying or even on set that uh, that can teach you like just things like communication marketing like leadership and mm-hmm. these are all skills that some way or the other come into play when you're mm-hmm. uh, being an actor 
you know, any books in the entrepreneurial space? Um, yeah, again, like it's not like entrepreneurial, but um, there's there's a book called um, The Science Behind Talent. Mm. Uh, no, I'm getting the name wrong. The Talent Code, mm. which I found like really the, then the 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 ten x rule. Mm. Um, and again, like I because I'm, this is a platform for for film lovers and artists, I would say to take all advice that's given in entrepreneurial books with a pinch of salt and adapt it to your own reality. Right. Because to remember that they are talking about a marketplace, they're mm -hmm. talking about a product, art is not a product. So while it might say the most efficient thing, for example, mm -hmm. I'm not quoting any particular right. book, but for example, if it says the most efficient thing is for your brand to be out there and be seen constantly 24 seven, mm -hmm. do whatever it takes, that doesn't necessarily always translate to you. So you have to see how it moves mm. to, to your reality. But where I feel like the worlds merge is that uh, you are um, putting out your performance, your art, your, I hate this term, but your brand, quote mm. unquote, to an audience, which becomes your consumer. So I would say read like entrepreneurship books, but always do a translation to what it means to in your line of work. It would be unfair for an aspiring musician to apply what go is going into a fintech startup in, right. in his world. Right. Uh, you also mentioned Murakami. So Murakami uh, is again a very vast world to get into. What are some of like images that you have, you know, experienced in a Murakami world that you still remember? I, I think, was it Norwegian Wood or uh, IQ84? It was one or two of those books. Um, and I love how he can take a moment in time. There's a, there's a moment where the protagonist in, in the book has lost his cat. Hmm. And he's just sitting on the balcony and wondering where his cat has gone. And uh, it's, it, it could, it's the kind of writing where that, that moment can either go away in one sentence or it can go on for one whole chapter. Right. And he manages to take a moment hmm. and stretch it for that entire that entire chapter and still keep you engaged. Right. And I know that he works a lot with with, with cats and about like more moments around that. Mm -hmm. And those are visuals that I always think of. Every time I see a stray cat, yeah. um, it's a it's a Murakami uh, image that, that that comes to me. Which, yeah. and strangely, as I say this, it's um, like like we were talking about reading. Like podcast is another thing mm. where um, I don't have a set list of, hey, these are the podcasts I subscribe to. But mm. again, it becomes like, you, you know, you're on Spotify or right. whatever app you're on. And then there are these bite-sized mm -hmm. uh, snippets that, that, that come across. And uh, Sadhguru, strangely, mm -hmm. says, um, and I only say this because I think like what happens with actors through the years is that acting not only changes your worldview, it changes your view about yourself. Right. And it's very hard to be in a city like Bombay, be an artist and not in some way or the other, um, become slightly spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, and by, like people, the minute I use the word spirituality, it automatically springs up images of, hey, like, you know, like white robe in a right. meditation right. retreat. But that doesn't, that's like mm -hmm. one phase of spirituality mm -hmm. but when I, I I just mean like a more philosophical um, like spiritual worldview of life mm -hmm. and that starts to happen the minute you start to see things through different characters you tend to get a lot of perspective but coming back to Murakami and how it links to mm -hmm. Sadhguru um, I like Sadhguru has like this moment of um, like where he says like profound mo moments uh, can be in the smallest thing or like the, the, the biggest thing mm -hmm. in, like the biggest moments in your life can go away with um, with you not realizing the profoundness in them, mm -hmm. which is sort of like like the distilled version of that is that like life is not happening at you; it's coming like from you. Mm -hmm. And I think I've I've heard uh, like an actor I can't remember who it was, but I've seen this in a podcast like that right. particular saying. And I think Murakami does this really well. Mm -hmm. He can take a simple moment of I just reached for my green tea and had a sip mm -hmm. and can describe that mm -hmm. in like twenty five pages. Right. Uh, are there any uh, book recommendations in the philosophy or like the spirituality uh, place like from where someone can start you know getting into this rabbit hole um, there's no one starting point like mm -hmm. there's like many but for me like a book that really opened me up to the possibility of this this concept was uh, Eckhart Tolle's um, The Power of Now right because again, it's not really a quote unquote spiritual book. It's something that you could apply if you're a mm. sportsman, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, if you're going through a breakup mm. and it's, it, it's, it's beautiful. So the power of now, I would really recommend that one. Right. 
and are you into any self help books like is that a genre that you kind of like um a lot of the books that i've mentioned sort of bleed into the self help genre of right. like the 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 talent code or the mm-hmm. the power of now it's just that there is a sub genre of entrepreneurship yeah. or or philosophy but another like self help podcast is like tony robbins man anything mm-hmm. by him he's like a master right. of it and then there's another amazing one called the impact theory by mm-hmm. uh, tom belu and he's got like this amazing podcast where he just brings incredibly successful um entrepreneurs sportsmen actors directors and has conversations with them mm-hmm. so he's not trying to be self help but through people's struggles and journeys and moments of like just being genuine you realize that hey like you know what looks very glossy and amazing mm-hmm. when you're seeing it like in a magazine or this thing actually has a massive back story to all of right. it Oh uh, have you by any chance read Tools of Titans uh, Tim Ferriss I haven't no but I yeah. should yeah, yeah. But that is again a great like that was my in point into uh, you know self help and the world of uh, you know discovering yourself because I was very very of you know like advice books yeah. but then what this book is basically that it's a compilation of interviews like uh, conversations with a lot of uh, people who have achieved things and very like simple questions about health about uh, you know managing their day their daily rituals all of those things yeah. and one chapter in particular was on arnold schwarzenegger which is the first chapter that i read on the book mm. and it's such an interesting you know dive into his mind and what he is you know uh, it's crazy yeah. like if you think about it yeah. like we've just grown up with schwarzenegger so we take it for granted right. but for a man who immigrated to the states right. to with his accent with mm. his with his body type to first of all like ace bodybuilding then go on and ace acting then mm. go on to ace politics yeah. he's done in like one lifetime what most people can't mm. manage in six but you were saying like what did the book say about uh, yeah so uh, it had very interesting uh, like you know anecdotes and the uh, things he recommends as a daily lifestyle like he used to work as a plumber at one point in time so he has insights on like what he learned from a plumbing job that he applied into acting so there are very interesting things i think you would uh, really appreciate that yeah yeah really. i'm mean, just like there's a um a moment of like possibly why i related to mm-hmm. the bear as well i studied i did my masters in australia mm-hmm. and uh, like in australia when you get a student visa you uh, ca- ca- also get a work per- permit like you can right. work for x am- number of hours in a week and one of the things i did was worked in a in a cafe mm-hmm. um and again like the plumbing example that you just gave when you mm-hmm. do work like that it just like later in life teaches you so much in right. hindsight that you that you then like can can go on and yeah. and then apply so you're right like i feel mm-hmm. like philosophy spirituality inspiration can come from anywhere mm-hmm. and when i use the term spirituality just like you were saying you were really very about self help i yeah. think at some level everyone's got like that mm-hmm. cynical like should i should i not what i mean by spirituality and what it why it really helps with any form of art or entrepreneurship is self awareness right like just to be aware that you are in charge of your feelings and emotion and have more control than you used to think previously right and so are you more into non fiction generally or like do you yeah read? i would say more into mm-hmm. non fiction now just because you can pick up like a short article mm-hmm. or like you know listen to it quicker on a podcast mm-hmm. so definitely yeah now right. So yeah you mentioned articles like anything online that you you know publications or stuff that you follow that There's uh, an amazing uh, publication called Brain Pickings I mm-hmm. don't know if you uh, Maria heard of it. Yes yeah. yes so amazing again like mm-hmm. bite sized readings like she does the the reading of the entire book for you she'll take mm-hmm. out a chapter she'll relate it to different artists um then I feel like there's another one called Barker Mm-hmm. I'll definitely send the name across right. to you after this right. but it's either barking up the wrong tree or just barker mm-hmm. which is again like just uh, anecdotes from life mm-hmm. and uh, yeah otherwise just uh, as far as news is concerned like scroll mm-hmm. like I really like because they sometimes come up with like they'll review like a film or a documentary and just an interesting uh, mixed media website to go to right In India, in fact, there is a publication now called Paperclip. So, I've, I've uh, yeah. Them, yeah. So is what, it like an offshoot of the Wire? I'm, I'm I, not yeah, entirely okay, sure, yeah. but what they do is they take like very interesting stories about like from Indian history which you've never heard, and they convert them into Twitter threads. So okay. it's it is like written with full thoda se masala, hmm. but like it's very entertaining nice. to read. So they have very interesting pieces. Yeah. So yeah, any more uh, like books that you'd like to recommend? 
no man i think we're all out yeah, of money yeah yeah i think yeah, list, yeah yeah there's there's enough yeah. to read yeah. so yeah you had mentioned uh, drive uh, the ryan gosling yeah, movie what, what, and what there is yeah. one song in that movie which i really like like it's a scene i keep rewatching hmm, it's something uh, about you it's yeah night call yeah, by yeah. kavinsky so that wow, was my that is my night time yeah. drive song yeah. yeah so yeah what are your uh, favorite like songs that you'd like to recommend night call like from yeah. that film yeah night call yeah. no, in sure. general also yeah. like Okay, so let's uh, like narrow this down. Yeah, uh, please. What are your favorite songs? <laughs> so very uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, like uh, let's say uh, songs that you uh, songs that have a very special place. Like you know there are some songs that uh, you know if you want to make yourself feel in a certain way. Like let's say if I want to like cry, I would listen to a particular song. Not just crying, like even for happiness also. What is it? Tell me. We can we can play it now. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I will cry after the interview. Oh, no, but, no, no. Yeah. Is it going that badly? No, no, no. Okay, no, no, yeah. no. It's, it's going great. Okay. Yeah. Just in uh, general, like any yeah. song that you'd like to recommend. Can we go with artists? Because Chalo, I just yeah. feel even like artists works, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, just that um, again, like I find the question very confusing. Of hey, what kind of music do you mm. listen to? Because honestly, I'm the kind of person I can be listening to Drake in the morning mm. and Abida Parveen uh, in nice. the in, the, in in the evening. <laughs> yeah. So it's really that huh. uh, diverse. But, so you are uh, like genre agnostic. Completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Because I feel like music is such a it goes with your it mm. goes with what. your mood is that day what your what you're doing in that mm-hmm. moment but it really runs my life to mm-hmm. a large extent like it is like like i said like yeah. films right it's like the background score to mm-hmm. your life that's what music uh, yeah. it means to me so um interesting s- artists that i really like are uh, ben howard mm-hmm. uh, born iver like just yeah. like that that space of um, i i don't know how to characterize it but like it, it indie right. rock for like mm-hmm. in in the same but again like your journey when it comes to music starts off with when you're growing up listening mm. to a lot of bollywood and then when mtv sort of came mm. in i remember um seeing dire straits mm-hmm. uh, con- like concerts and yeah. uh, w- watching uh, like a michael jackson videos and that's like your first introduction to stuff mm. and then gradually when you move into college it becomes more about led zeppelin mm. and um pearl jam yeah. which was which, which is amazing and i feel like there's also like at the moment like the indie um, music scene in india is exp- exploding and like when i'm in the mood and when i'm driving there's uh, stuff like i i don't know if you're familiar with like hip hop or, or the rap scene there's mm-hmm. a guy called shub who's right. doing like amazing stuff there's talvinder mm-hmm. then there's uh, a delhi rap artist very new guy he's called kab q w a w a b then there's prab who's doing uh, mm. the amazing stuff the yellow diaries yeah and in the indian space if i had to go a little more old school which is um, actually not that old school but like indian ocean mm-hmm. euphoria parikrama right. like these are guys like if you were in delhi university uh, mm. in like the late 2000s you would go to their concerts and yeah. this was like your first exposure to like what a live concert is right. like really like life changing right Uh, do you have any favorite like concert memories like great concerts I I, I saw too? Pearl Jam mm-hmm. uh, in uh, live in Australia mm-hmm. and uh, I I I saw this in uh, was it one of your interviews I can't remember but I saw Abhishek Chobe put yeah, this like Yeah really, I I remembered uh, it because yes, of Yes yes I I remember because I remember I don't know whether I I saw a snippet of it yeah. or I saw your full interview yeah. but he he puts it really beautifully yeah. He's like it's like traveling right yeah. um like you can watch a concert right now and say that hey i saw like uh, like like drake or whatever mm-hmm. and had an amazing but that first moment yeah. of like when you say something at home to say mm-hmm. that hey i'm just going here and then you actually go with friends mm-hmm. to like walk into that concert that you've stood in line for mm-hmm. in college and then you watch parikrama and yeah. i remember like that first image of an electric guitarist with a cigarette in his mouth not wearing a shirt and wearing chains yeah. and like come out on his electric guitar like the lead singer and do a cover of a led zeppelin song mm-hmm. Like shit, man. That's what I want to be. Like you know, that's what what it is. It's like yeah. it's just it's that energy of, right. of being. I, I don't know whether it's got to do with a first experience because a lot of people go to their first mm-hmm. concerts like you know when they move away from home, start right. their job, or whether it's the stage of mm-hmm. being in college. But there's there was just something like I remember coming to Mood Indigo, which was the mm-hmm. festival at, at IIT Bombay, right. with friends from from Delhi and watching Lucky Ali for yeah. the first time. and uh, you, you know this cell phones uh, were like the new thing back mm-hmm. in the day and in concert they uh, like he there was a moment when the lights went off and everyone puts their their cell phone up and just like these are like images that come to your mind when you say what is your most 
fun concept right uh again related to songs so uh you since you are into hip hop as well so when you're listening to a song uh what is the first thing that you pay attention to like do you generally pay attention to the lyrics uh, directly or like is it the tune or like the arrangement that there's a cliched saying uh that I'm going to throw at you which mm-hmm. is like when you're happy you listen to the music when you're sad you listen to the lyrics so you right. see that one it's like <laughs> yeah. a, it's a it's a it's a classic yeah uh, cla- classic meme but mm-hmm. um, it again it really depends on the kind of song I'm listening to if mm-hmm. it's hip hop then it's the beat and it's mm-hmm. the it's the music but right. like sometimes if you really go into it like Kendrick Lamar for mm-hmm. example you listen to N95 yeah. it's got like some profound like lyrics over there or Dave we were talking about like if you go into some of his lyrics it's semi auto biographical and mm-hmm. even um so, so a lot of the indian new indie rap artists um I, i feel like we're not at the stage where you can categorize a lot of those songs as poetry right. yet but there is there's a story there mm-hmm. which really gets you i mean like he's been given a pulitzer prize i think yeah. it should classify as poetry but mm. there is that I was talking about yeah. indian uh, yeah. artists where yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, Do you uh, explore like regional hip hop as well, or just in Hindi? No, I haven't yet. Mm-hmm. But I've heard like there, there's a there's a new uh, hip hop artist that that's from Bombay, from Dharavi, who rapped in Tamil mm-hmm. very recently, and right. I definitely want to check out more of that. I haven't. Yeah, right. that's I I mm-hmm. guess like one of the negatives and the positives of uh, having an app that's got an algorithm, right? Like mm-hmm. because earlier you used to have a set music playlist, and if a friend recommended something. Mm-hmm. but now a lot of the times i've discovered stuff is because like the app throws up yeah. hey you might like yeah. and i used to cringe at it earlier saying like why is technology telling me what to listen <laughs> to but sometimes if you give in to it you discover cool shit mm-hmm. right and did you ever make any mixtapes like back in the day mm-hmm. so if you had to make not like, uh, mixtapes you're aging me too much <laughs> i i i we used to burn cds right So huh. yeah, for sure. Nero mostly, CD burner. Yes, yeah. Nero CD burner. Mostly, <laughs> yeah. mostly to impress girls. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I used to do. And the, the most amazing uh, moment in my life was when you discovered that now you can get coloured CDs. So mm-hmm. when you went from the regular silver CDs, you could now get blue and yeah. and red coloured CDs. And right. used to be a different trip. Mm-hmm. I think like again like funny meme that sort of really. tells you how and you know the thing is is that it sounds old mm. but it really wasn't that long ago right. like it was like this this whole transition to digital music mm. was it was like a very fast you yeah. went from like burning to napster to uh, no you went limewire napster then to a bunch of other things yeah. and then uh, itunes and then before you know it it's yeah. now on streaming streaming yeah yeah so um in again not to make you sound old but are you a nostalgic we should we should, we should put that before <laughs> yeah. every question not to make you sound yeah. old yeah yeah are you a nostalgic person in general yeah very as in someone by, like who looks back fondly at the past yeah mm. like and i would say not only in terms of memory but also in terms of photographs films mm. uh, wardrobe like vintage vintage yeah. wear in in a lot of it yeah right any particular like purchase or anything that you still have which you have kept only for like nostalgic reasons that this is i want to look at this and feel a certain way that i feel felt once so my my uh, dad used to be a fighter pilot mm. and he had an aviator's jacket right. and so that's like something of his that that i have and mm. of course like anyone who lives in bombay knows mm. that you can't wear a leather jacket <laughs> very often but it's just something that hangs in the yeah. cupboard for many reasons eh because it's such like it's it's a cool like sort of 80s uh, this thing and also mm. because of family uh, family nostalgia so that's um definitely like one one of those things right yeah and uh, i'm sure you would have loved a uh, top gun and top gun maverick then <sighs> yeah man yeah. i did that's i i've spoken to a lot of people who have mixed opinions on uh, part 2 like some people didn't like who it who are these people i know exactly <laughs> i that is what the vibe i had but i thought it was such a tasteful uh, tribute to the yeah, original yeah. because given what technology is today there are so many ways that you could have gone about it mm. and like just for the sake of putting in excessive camera angles right. or like like to like make the music more current but it had such a nostalgic authenticity to it and mm. i don't know whether i'm right about this but i even felt like they didn't change the font of the opening credits to the original which yeah. was like to me it was amazing yeah. someone could have done so many things with those opening credits but they but they didn't and it was great to see um a protagonist in a film who is 60 years old mm. play a 60 year old right. like to play his age and not try and um and with all the 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 
should I use the word failings or should yeah. all the challenges that come yeah. with that, they've mocked those and they've mm. leaned, they sort of lean in, into that. And I thought it was it was amazingly done. Of course, yeah. the original is still my favorite. Yeah. But like, again, watched it two times in mm. the theater. And also yeah. it was at the cusp of that. This is, I think, before Pathan came out. Right, right. Of that moment of like theaters just opening. Yeah, so yeah. it was such an amazing um, experience to have in the theater. Right. Are there any documentaries that you would like to recommend? Yeah, I feel like the documentary scene also is just exploding and that has a lot to do with um, with streaming as well. Um, a, a recent series that I'm watching and this is for people who like like true crime mm -hmm. and good recreations with good interviews is called Catching Killers. Mm -hmm. Every episode is an individual case and they solve it in that one 40 minute uh, episode and it's yeah. just really well done. And mm -hmm. then there's this uh, documentary it, Series is what I would call it, is The Staircase. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? It's just so it. well strung mm -hmm. together on what Netflix. What is it about? It's about a man who's suspected of murdering his wife mm -hmm. and uh, the, the entire trial. And he was just off the, the, he just had the foresight to say that if I'm to prove to a jury that I wasn't guilty, I need to start recording everything that goes on during mm -hmm. this investigation process. And so it is present day interviews with past recordings and that entire case and it's right. just so well done it's called the staircase mm -hmm. um there's a there's a documentary called don't fuck with the cats mm -hmm. uh, is amazing it's about like a serial killer mm -hmm. uh, I feel like streaming does this to you, right? Yeah. You just start watching so much dark stuff that makes you, but that's not who I am. It's just like you automatically get drawn to this. And then if it's a story well told, mm -hmm. um, it's something that you enjoy watching. My Octopus Teacher yeah. like, was, was really nice. Wild, Wild Country, the mm -hmm. one about Osho yeah. was was uh, really well done. Yeah, these are just like a couple of the ones on, on top yeah. of my head. You mentioned uh, true crime. So initially when I was like discovering the genre, I thought that, okay, in every documentary, the case is solved eventually. Yeah. Then I heard this podcast called Serial, which is about like uh, cases and stuff. And then the first case itself, it remains unsolved till today. I'm like, wait, where is the closure that I wanted? Yeah. I wanted it to be solved. So I think that was like a discovery but for me. But is that like a, do you, would you enjoy something like that? Because it would kill me because then I yeah. would start like... Yeah, then you I would are want to detect investigating it. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it happened also, like even with Memories of Murder, uh, the like the final uh, yeah, I think even killer was ends like that. Ca caught like a few years back. Yeah. So I think yeah, it kind of helps that people become like vigilante yeah. investigators. Yeah. So, uh, Webb, do you want to ask any questions? Yeah, just a, a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, so artistically speaking, when was the last time you felt you were wrong about something? Okay, I thought this works like this, but I was so wrong. Hmm. Do you mean a, a decision in life or do you mean like a decision that you took while during a performance? Both, did like did I just open know, myself up to another uh, answer? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you can take it either way. Yeah, it can be an observation. I thought this is how this thing works, but hmm. I'm so wrong about this. Yeah. So this is what my opinion of this thing was, but no, I was wrong. So um, this is a series that I'm shooting at the moment. It hasn't been announced and it hasn't released, so I can't go into like, but it's, it's a moment where there was a half a page monologue mm -hmm. and it was an emotional uh, monologue and I had spent weeks prepping for mm -hmm. it and on and as very often happens on the, like a day before the director showrunner and writer sat together and they felt like this is too verbose mm -hmm. the same thing that we're saying in 15 lines can be said in two lines and we're going to treat it in a particular way because of the way that the the camera is moving and uh, my first instinct as and this is would be a lot of actors instinct is to say that hey man this was like an emotional performance moment and it was like a like almost a catharsis for my character and uh, like i had the chat with the director to say that i don't think this is the right call let's shoot the entire thing and then you can take the call on edit of if you want to bring it down to two lines but his call was no where because production comes in, right? You want to mm -hmm. like set up the camera, you want mm -hmm. to light it, you're going to then... So he was like, no, we're only going to do it in two lines. And so reluctantly, uh, the emotional journey that that character was going through in 15 lines, I had to do in a concise two line way. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at it during the dub on post, it works. Yeah. And so what the audience will finally see, they, they'll never know that there was a half a page to it. So it almost sort of 
uh, it was a challenge because how do you bring 15 lines into two? But also sort of teaches you that sometimes stuff that you're married to on paper, mm. I use the word married to in terms yeah. of something that you're like mm. passionate about right. because you've spent time with it, can change last minute. It might not necessarily be something that you agree with because of reasons that you're emotionally attached to, but it can, um, it, it can work. Right. Yeah. Right. Another question, like, do you have any YouTube channel or Instagram handle um, I'd, on Insta, on, honestly, I follow a, a lot of photographers and a lot of um, a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, because like the Instagram stream is just so like by the second, uh, I'd really like, love to like share some of them. So if you use visuals during the interview, right. we can. But that's what I feel like because in between, uh, because of suggestions, so much of it becomes like 80% of the time you're watching stuff that you have zero interest in and you end up watching tabloids mm -hmm. uh, on at least like, it depends on what you're, so I very consciously started watching um, like interesting artists from all over the world who mm -hmm. work with mixed media or photographers mm -hmm. whose work is just amazing, mm -hmm. uh, whose handles don't come to mind, mm -hmm. but I'll be happy to share them with you later. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so which is the app that you spend the most of your time on? WhatsApp. WhatsApp. You, okay, huh. Sort of obvious answer. Yeah. But uh, I think WhatsApp is better. Like uh, we've asked this to a lot of people and most people say Instagram because it is yeah. designed in that way. It is. Yeah. I try very hard, very mm. unsuccessfully not to spend as much time on Instagram. Mm. But uh, yeah, you're right. It just it just happens. Like you think, okay, 15 minutes, but then before you know it, two hours have, yeah. uh, two hours have, have gone by. But um, like I also like um, using time on photo editing apps like mm. if a picture has come out and you can do like some amazing stuff on, on apps these days so I spend some time on apps like that do you like uh, take an interest in photography like do you click pictures um, I would say like back in college or in first year yes mm -hmm. more passionately back then in terms of like having an SLR and lenses mm -hmm. but um, unfortunately now not mm -hmm. to that extent as I would like to like I wouldn't make a special Mm -hmm. trip just as like right. a photography trip but even just when like with the phone and when it comes to editing mm -hmm. down images I do love uh, like like photography and I always like it, it's almost um, it's a sort of inevitable when it comes to like an artist particularly an actor's page that when it comes down to images that get seen I'd like the, the the word for it tracks better right. are when you put out things about like yourself like, right. like for example a, a, a like a, a, a styled picture of me would do better on Instagram versus like just photography mm -hmm. that I would do and that always like sort of and I'm always there's all actors have digital teams and teams right. that um, like sort of are supposed to give you ideas mm -hmm. of hey like you know this is what you should do and it I'm always in that discussion with them of hey in every three pictures of like you know vanity van behind the scenes or gym behind the scenes mm -hmm. let's put out one photography image right. like because I feel like it also tells you so much about the person right, right? like the kind of photographs they take the kind of music that they mm -hmm. they listen to so yeah it's just like one of the cool things about what you can do with Instagram right uh, again, a slightly unrelated question, but you were mentioning about how you have to become, you have to uh, let go of things that you're very attached to. And there's a very good book on writing called Kill Your Darlings. So it's about screenwriting, but it's basically about the same thought that if you are very attached to something, then like just it will it will get cut out in the editing. So do you write like, or do you like plan on writing anything? Um, no, I wouldn't say I full on write like mm -hmm. screenplays and right. this thing. I like dabble in like occasional writing now and then. But I feel like what you said is like, it's like so relatable in a strange way to mm -hmm. life as well. Like sometimes you feel like you're attached and you cannot do without mm -hmm. thing X or person X. Right. And uh, suddenly when it's uh, that moment or that thing or that experience is edited out, you sort of evolve around it. Right. Yeah. Great. So uh, this is my last recommendation from you. Any product that you would like people to buy uh, under 10,000, which like really changed your life? My AirPods, I would mm -hmm. say, is because like you can carry music with you right. everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would probably just be like right. one thing that I can think of mm -hmm. off the cuff. Um, the other thing would be... Um, like my my gym water bottle i'm just mm -hmm. like thinking of off, off mm -hmm. the cuff like what right, are the products yeah these are like yeah. the only two yeah, anything that, like people yeah. have recommended sneakers yeah. people have recommended headphones so like whatever floats your boat yeah yeah <laughs> of course like sneakers as well like airpods water mm -hmm. sunglasses 
थैंक यू सो मच तायर दीज आर वेरी लवली रिकमेंडेशन आई विल ट्राई एंड कैच अपन ऑल द सीरियल किलर डॉक्यूमेंट गिवेन एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर डूइंग दिस एंड होप वी सी यू सो नंग थैंक यू मैम माई प्लेजर थैंक्स Hi guys this is Tahir Raj Bhaseen you're watching or listening to me on Chalchitra Talks please like share and subscribe So I hope you liked the episode and if you have watched till here do use the hashtag only loaded questions in the comments below and now here is the movie recommendation that i promised to so, movie pe aapko ek film dekhni hai jiska naam hai waltz with bashir this is one of the most hard hitting animated films that i have ever seen jiska ek bahut hi unique visual style hai jahan pe real life images ko comic book ke frames ki tarah animate kiya gaya hai ye film 1982 ke lebanon war aur uske effects pe based hai jisme film ke director ari folman khud ek soldier the aapne american sniper aur saving private ryan jaisi filmon mein वॉर और सोल्जर्स पे उसका इम्पैक्ट देखा होगा पर एनिमेशन के जरिए ये फिल्म आपको सीधा सोल्जर्स की साइकी के अंदर ले जाती है जहाँ उनकी जिंदगी में वॉर की वजह से ड्रीम और रियलिटी के बीच का फर्क मिटता जा रहा है इस फिल्म के ओपनिंग सीन को मैं बार बार रिविजिट करता हूँ जहाँ पे खूंखार कुत्तों का एक ग्रुप शहर की सड़कों पर भाग रहा होता है एंड इट शोज यू हाउ अन कैन बी सो वायलेंट एंड डिस्टर्बिंग without any real bloodshed or any hardcore action of any kind so do watch waltz with bashir on mubi like i said aapko mubi ki 1 month ki free subscription milegi if you click on the link mubi.com/chalchitra mubi is also hosting a retrospective of films by the director fateh akin whose films like head on are considered by many filmmakers like anurag kashyap as a deep influence on their work so do share your thoughts in the comments and i'll see you soon in the next episode mm-hmm.